Continuing with Python examples, let's have a look at Python SNMP implementation with the PySNMP library. Who needs this? I don't know. I tried it and found that API works a lot better. So if you want to use SNMP with Python, it's most likely that you have some legacy setup that you want to build on top of. Or whatever the case may be, I will show you a simple example. Tools like SNMP Walk and SNMP Get seem like good options when combined with bash scripting, but we can't use them in Python. The library that we will use in this demonstration seems to be the most popular option, but it's a little clumsy, so forgive me if there is anything better out there. First, go to the SNMP section on your device that you would like to gather data from and set enabled to yes if you haven't done so already. I will use the default public community with no security setup. And now we can look at some code. I have already written a couple of lines here to speed things up. I have imported everything from pysnmp.hl API, and then I have simply stored my router's IP address into a variable. And I have created a dictionary of tuples that basically maps the OID and this technical descriptor to its meaning in English. I'm assuming you already know what OIDs you would like to use. You could look them up in free databases like oid-info.com or some of them can be requested from within RouterOS. When you got the ones you need, you don't need to store them in a dictionary. You could use a simple list if you want, but doing it as in my example, we can later use this dictionary in the process of parsing as well. Now we're going to add the main snippet of code that will gather SNMP data and for the most part, you can reuse this code with minimal changes. We will be using a function called next that will return a tuple of four objects. So start with declaring those. The first three are to deal with errors and we won't even use them this time. What we are interested in is the fourth object that will contain the variables returned from our device. Inside this next function, we are calling the get command function that will actually do the magic we are looking for. For this, we have to specify that we will be using SNMP engine. The community data will be what you have used. For me, that's public. Then the UDP transfer target is my router's IP with the default SNMP port 161. Context data and finally, to request a specific OID, we have to create an object with the OID as a property. Now, if we iterate over our var binds object, we will get a neat response with the variable and its value. As you might guess, these variable names are not always self-explanatory, and if you requested multiple OIDs, they will get returned in mixed order, which is why a dictionary can help a lot with parsing these. Since we can reuse this part of the code, we can turn it into a simple function that takes an IP address and this OID object or a set of OID objects and returns us only the output. Now let's use our dictionary to create a set of these OID objects and pass them to our new getData function. Okay, that looks like some data. Now we should translate that to human language. I'll force the result to be a string as currently it is not, and then we can use our dictionary to parse it. Looks good, but the time is still unreadable. That value is actually expressed in seconds followed by two zeros, so we can divide it by 100 and then use date time time delta to convert it to human time. And we can see that the uptime is 8 hours and 30 minutes. Alright, I'm going to stop with the demonstration here as it is taking a lot of time to make these and the cost to benefit is probably not worth it. Obviously, you could now take the data you received and perform further actions. Back when I tried to make use of this library to monitor a network, I would take the interface count number and use it to loop over the OIDs for different interface stats. And it worked well, in a sense, as those OIDs end with the interface number, which in this case would be from 1 to 15. 
But the main issue you run into with this library is that the get command takes up most of the execution time. So if you have to use it repeatedly, such as once for each interface, the total execution time will quickly rack up to several seconds. 